Good morning. How's everybody doing? Lovely, warm, wet December morning, huh? Welcome to December. Woo! Yeah, you guys sound excited about that. Okay. Hey, you guys like food, right? Yes. Did you sign up yet to bring some? I will. I heard, I heard that. I don't know what you I signed up to eat it. You signed up to eat it? Very good. Good, very good. Um, that is on the back of your program. If you would get a hold of Deb or Jenny and let them know, or there is a convenient sign up board out in our vestibule area, as it were, for you to sign up. And the nice thing is, you know, all you have to do is the shopping because it's it's too much for you know the the leadership, I guess, of the church to to go do the shopping all the time for the hospitality food. Plus, it allows for a lot more variety. When we get more people involved in the shopping of the foods, and I like variety, but it's not all about me. I just know I'm just one member that likes variety. Speaking of food, after next week's service, there will be food as well. If you stay for our annual congregational meeting, and it says in the uh, program that it's going to last about an hour, the meeting portion will probably only last about a half hour, but there will be food involved. So. Um, Go ahead, stick, stick around for that, have some finger foods and hors d'oeuvres and such. And um, we'll just start talking about some of those one-on-one -on -one interviews that uh, we had a couple of weeks back and kind of plan our future. Uh, we have one more study with Christmas is not your birthday, but there's a little bit of a change. It won't be at Kristen's house this week, it will be at Kelly's house. Now her email and her phone number are in the program. So if you would like to attend, it doesn't matter if you've not attended the previous studies, but if you would like to attend, please do give Kelly a call. It's been a wonderful study, and I think you'll enjoy it, even if you're only there for one week. The last uh, announcement that I'd like to make is kind of lengthy. It all has to do with the Christmas offering. Number one, there are special Christmas offering envelopes. So if you'd like to donate to the Christmas offering, you can use the special envelope. Or you can donate online. That's always a, an easy, a really easy way to take care of that. If you want more information about the Christmas offering, we have these lovely brochures out on the welcome table. And these might also be something handy to pass along to someone else who, you know, kind of likes to make a year-end donation for whatever purposes. And uh, that might you know, be a way of sharing with them, hey, this might be a, a good, you know, use of your money and a good use of your, I, I guess, your gifts that you like to give back to, to Jesus on his birthday. And if you would like to, instead of, gosh, just celebrating someone else on Jesus' birthday by giving them lots of gifts, maybe you make a gift in their honor. And if you'd like to do that, we have these wonderful little cards with envelopes that you can use for those purposes. So lots and lots of ways to think about that Christmas offering that is to benefit children near and far. Last thing that I would like to mention, this is now officially the start of the Advent season. And if you have a home Advent wreath, candles that you'd like to light at home on each of the Sundays of Advent, there is a lovely... Uh, just one page uh, sheet out on the welcome table again that you and your family can use as you're celebrating Advent together at home. That's all I have to say about that. i 
Come 
so happened as Zechariah was carrying out his priestly duties before God, working the shift aside to his ritual. It came his one turn in life to center sanctuary of God and burn incense. The congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple at the hour of the incense offering. Unannounced, an angel of God appeared just to the right of the altar of the incense. Zechariah was paralyzed in fear. But the angel reassured, reassured him, Don't fear, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will be bear a son by you. You are to name him John. You are going to leap like a gazelle for joy. And not only you, you many will delight in his birth. He will achieve great stature with God. He will herald God's arrival in the style and strength of Elijah. Soften the hearts of parents to children and kindle devout understanding among hardened skeptics. He'll get the people ready for God. Zechariah said to the angel, Do you expect me to believe this? I am an old man and my wife is an old woman. But the angel said, I am Gabriel, the centennial of God, especially to bring you in this glad news. But because you won't believe me, you'll be unable word I have spoken to you will come true on time, God's time. Meanwhile, the congregation waiting for Zechariah was getting restless, wondering what was keeping him so long in the sanctuary. When he came out, he couldn't speak. They, were, they knew he had seen a vision. He continued speechless and had to use sign language with the people. When the course of his priestly assignment was completed, he went back home. It wasn't long before his wife was she went off by herself for five months, relishing her pregnancy. So this is how God acts to rem remedy my unfortunate condition, condition she said. Thank you, Jada. Good morning, everyone. watch and wait for the coming of Christmas, we ask you to open our hearts, open our minds to receive the gift of Jesus once again. Speak to us. We have come here to hear your message of grace, your message of challenge, your message of comfort. Speak to us, O oh God. We are listening. Amen. <coughs> Well, the four candles on the Advent wreath tell us that we're four Sundays from Christmas. Christmas is on a Tuesday this year, so we're actually only just a little over three weeks from Christmas, though. During this season called Advent, we prepare our hearts to receive Jesus once again. Every year at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ one more time. We repeat this ancient story every year because it never gets old, does it? Never gets old. <clears throat> God loves us so much that God refused to stay far away in that heavenly place. God said, I want to get right there in the thick of human experience. I want to be there in human form. I want to show my people just how much I love them. Do you know, do you <coughs> understand that God sent Jesus just for you? Just for you. That's what Christmas is about. That's the Christmas miracle we celebrate. Every year as followers of Jesus, we make space again for Jesus. We open ourselves up 
to the miracle that is Christmas. We join Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the magi and we open ourselves to receive the baby born in a manger. So what will you do to get ready? What will you do to make room for Jesus, to make room for the surprise and the miracle that God has prepared for you? I want to tell you a story about some people who got a miracle. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth lived in Judea at the time when Herod was king. Zechariah was a priest. He was one of many priests. And it came time for his one turn to go into the temple, into the Holy of Holies, and burn incense. And Zechariah went in, and he was caught by surprise. An angel said to him, Your wife is going to have a baby. Zechariah laughed because his wife Elizabeth was way too old to have a baby. Well, guess what? Angels of God do not take kindly when they come to tell you the message of a miracle and you laugh. So the angel said, Zechariah, you're not going to be able to speak until that baby is born. And so when Zechariah went out of the temple to his friends, <coughs> He had to use sign language to speak. He went home to Elizabeth and he had to use sign language, but he told her, we're going to have a baby. She probably laughed too. But in time, she discovered that she was pregnant at her very old age and the baby was born and they named him John as the angel told them to. Well, their friends were all perplexed because the tradition was that you would name a baby a family name, and there was no one named John in their family. Once they named the baby John, Zechariah's voice came back because he had been faithful. The angel said to Zechariah, John will be very special. He will herald God's arrival in the style and strength of Elijah. John will soften the hearts of parents to children and kindle devout understanding among hardened skeptics. Isn't that wonderful? Kindle devout understanding among hardened skeptics. John will get the people ready for God. John would be John the Baptist, the one who heralded the coming of Jesus. God interrupted Elizabeth and Zechariah's ordinary life with the miracle of a baby. The baby John was the cousin of Jesus. Mary was the cousin of Elizabeth. Now what does this story tell us? At any moment, God can break into our bland, boring, workaday lives with a miracle too. Do you believe that? But we have to pay attention. We have to be watching and waiting for angels who may come and tell us <coughs> that God wants to do something for us. When Zechariah was in the temple, he was watching and waiting for God, right? He was doing something special. He was praying. He was listening for God. Here's the secret. We can't hear God if we're rushing around doing all sorts of things and not listening to God. If we're so busy, we can't make space for God. That's what Advent is about. Taking time to light a candle 
in hope, to wait for God, to make space, to remember what the season of Christmas is about, to pay attention to the signs that Jesus wants to come into our lives. But there's another level to the Christmas miracle. God may just want us to be workers of miracles for one another. You see, we are followers of Jesus. We may be the only Jesus that some people see. We are the hands and the feet of Jesus in the world. And so God may be showing us situations where we need to act. We may need to be God's instruments of love in the world to change the world. And in this Christmas season, we need to pay attention to those signals too. You see, when God sent Jesus into the world, God was sending God's love into the world in human form, right? But love has always been in the world. God's love is in each one of us because God created us and God is love. God's love is in each one of us. The miracle is when that love breaks through and when that love grows through us and in us and spills over into the world. At Christmas, God feeds our natural desire to love. But it can happen throughout the year. At Christmas, it just it spreads more. Let me give you an example. Did any of you see this picture on the internet this week? A police officer in New York was walking his regular beat in Times Square and he came across a homeless man sitting with no shoes. The man said he never had any shoes. I find that just unbelievable. The officer, Lawrence DePrimo, said he was wearing thick socks and boots and his feet were cold. He saw this homeless man with no shoes, and so Lord Supremo walked into the shoe store and bought the man some boots and gave them to him. He, he didn't even think about it. He just went and bought the man some boots. It just happened that there was a tourist there, Jennifer Foster of Florence, Arizona. She spotted this homeless man begging for change, and she snapped this picture. The thing went viral. Two million people have viewed this picture on the Internet. It warmed our hearts. We want to see this kind of generosity, don't we? We want to be like this 25-year-old cop who still lives with his mother, by the way, and spent $75 on boots for this homeless man. Officer DePrimo says he still carries the receipt for the boots in his bulletproof vest because he wants to remember that there are people in need in the world. And he wants to remember that we need to help one another. Here's another story. On Friday night, for the village's monthly service project, some of us went to Food for Thought. Every Friday night at a church in Oregon, Ohio, people gather to make 350 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And they bag up chips in bags and cookies and bag lunches and then some other folks on Saturday morning take them to a parking lot down across the street from the public library and hand them out to people who are hungry. This project has been going on for six years. Eighteen people from the village went there Friday night. Raise your hand if you were there Friday night. Now, there must have been 150 people there Friday night to make 350 sandwiches and lunches. It only took us 45 minutes. We were out of there in 45 minutes. It was crazy. It, it was as if they didn't really need our help. Pat Grove said it was the easiest service project she ever did. She said she taught inner city kids how to kayak this week. That was way harder. That was way harder than making those sandwiches. Now, the director told us 
that the number of volunteers was an anomaly. He thinks it's because it was December, right, and everybody wants to do good in December, and probably there were a bunch of high school kids who needed to get their community service hours in at the end of the semester. He asked us to please come back because some weeks at 6 o'clock, the people in charge look around and there are four people there. Okay, so we need to go back. It was a Christmas miracle. They're there every week, every week, feeding hungry people. Many people will be generous this month. He said in January, they'll really need help. But I want us to remember to be generous this month too we're going to work a Christmas miracle this month at the village. We have a goal to raise $5,000 for our Christmas offering called Hope for Children Near and Far. Our Christmas offering is going to help provide job training for children at the Fairfield Children's Home in Zimbabwe. When these kids turn 18, we don't want them to just get kicked out of the children's home and have nothing to do. Our gifts will help them get job training. Some of them go to college or get an apprenticeship. Our Christmas offering will also help provide for our village kids ministry right here at the village church. Our goal is $5,000. So far, we've already raised $1,150, but we're still far from our $5,000 goal. I hope you and your family, as you plan your Christmas gift giving are remembering the village Christmas offering. We want to be generous at Christmas time. We want to make a miracle happen here at the village. As you prepare your heart to celebrate Christmas, I want you to ask yourself a question. Are you ready? To experience a miracle this Christmas. Zechariah and Elizabeth never could have imagined that God was going to give them a baby. So the miracle that God has in store for us is probably something we haven't even thought of. Are you open to God? Are you listening to God? Are you making space to listen to God? Are you lighting a candle every day? Are you, are you making space for some quiet? Are you watching and waiting for what God wants to do? You just don't know how God might want to use you to make this world better for yourself or for somebody else. When God blesses you, will you use your gifts to bless somebody else? You see, Zechariah and Elizabeth received a wonderful gift of a child, but God called them to use that gift to bless the world. They couldn't keep that gift to themselves. God gives us many gifts, but God often asks us to share that gift then with other people. Christmas is just a little over three weeks away, and Advent is our time to watch and prepare. We just don't know what God might have in store for us, but I know this. God loves us. And God's love is coming into our lives in big ways. God always wants to bless us and God wants us to bless other people. The gift of Jesus is always a miracle. And when we receive Jesus, Jesus allows us to bless other people in wonderful ways. So friends, get ready. Get ready to work some miracles. God used Zechariah and Elizabeth to work a miracle. And God wants to use us, so watch 
open yourself, get ready for God's miracle, expect a miracle, and be ready to be a blessing to this world this Christmas. Amen. And invite the band up now to offer us another song. challenges, we'll be happy to come and serve you in your seats. Just let somebody who's sitting here you know, and uh, we'll be happy to come and serve you where you are. People across the world uh, participate in this meal, and when we celebrate communion, we join with our brothers and sisters around the world. When we gather at this table, we give thanks for the blessings of God. We give thanks for God's creation, and we give thanks that we are created in God's image. We give thanks that God's Spirit lives in each one of us, and that the gift of God's love is with us, and that we can be God's instruments of love. We give thanks that God saw fit to send Jesus into the world to come and show us the breadth 
and the depth of God's love. We remember that when Jesus was with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, take and eat this bread. This is my body given for you. Eat this bread and know that your sins are forgiven and that I am always with you. My love is in your heart. Eat this bread in remembrance of me. At that same meal, Jesus took a cup. He blessed it and he said, drink from this cup, all of you. This cup is my blood shed for you. This is the cup of salvation. Drink from this cup and know that I am with you. Oh God, we ask you now to bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be the hands and the feet of Jesus in the world. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for these gifts through which you feed us and heal us and give us strength to go into the world as you are people. Amen. Let's continue to thank God for the many gifts that he's blessed us with by giving a portion back to him as we uh, bring our tithes and offerings. I would ask you to reach out and touch the basket as it goes by to continue to bless the giver and the gift.
watch for that miracle, wait for God, and as you are watching for God, watch for that person who needs you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.